packet into our XAML into multiple files while maintaining a single controller still. Those are all great, but the key piece here that we're talking about and another part of your toolbox is the relative panel. The relative panel allows us to move things around, not just related to each other, but also in a simplified tree and in a simplified way whenever we use visual states. It's a pretty clean and easy simple implementation. So this is Visual Studio 2015 preview that you can do this in. You can do this today. I, uh, we encourage you to download Visual Studio uh, preview and try it for yourself. See if the relative panel is as easy as we make it sound. Yep. You'll find that it really is. Try it out for yourself, then come back and watch another module. Thanks for watching. Hi, welcome to the Developer's Guide to Windows 10 Preview. I'm Andy Wigley. I'm a developer evangelist, works out of Microsoft in the UK. I'm Jerry Nixon, also a developer evangelist here in the United States. So this session, we're going to talk about adaptive triggers, which is a technique for uh, helping you to create adaptive UIs yeah. that will uh, give you, uh, your users a great experience uh, with your app running on different screen sizes, different orientations. There's a, there's a full story when we're yeah. talking about adaptive applications in Windows 10. And I think it's worth talking through that story and kind of seeing how adaptive triggers fit into that. All right, so what's the story for Windows 10? Well, it kind of begins with just good practices, the sort of things that we learn, I guess, as web developers. Yep. Yeah, so web developers have been used to for a long, long time thinking about their pages working on different screens, uh, in, uh, different devices. So they, they have been doing this kind of, these kind of design approaches for quite some time. For, as app developers now on the Windows 10 platform, you've got one binary, you've got a, a UI that needs to adapt to run on potentially small phone screens right up to maybe Surface Hub 85-inch uh, wall-mounted uh, devices, if you wish. You don't have to have it running on all of them, but these, these are the things you can do. And so we need some techniques in our toolbox to help us to, uh, to address this problem and create great experiences for our users. And you know, beyond some of those design best practices that we've already learned as web developers that we get to employ, there are also some things specifically in our toolbox that allow us to really, um, to really make it elegant as well. So yep. one of the first things that you get to do is the idea of XAML views. So this allows me to take my XAML and break it into multiple files while still having a single code behind or a single yep. XAML controller. This means I can move from one to another. Maybe one is all of my phone XAML and one is all of my desktop and all, one is all of my Xbox XAML, right? All separated so that my XAML is simplified. Maybe I can even send this off to different developers so, or different designers even and let them focus on it. And uh, that allows me to sort of isolate my code. But I also have this idea of the relative panel, another tool that's in the XAML toolbox that I can use where this control allows for its children to be laid out in relation to the other children. Another really powerful and neat piece of the adaptive story that we have for, uh, for Windows 10. So let's take a look here. This is OneNote. So this is one of the earlier mockups. It may look a little bit different now. I don't know for sure. But um, this allows us to really see how the UI is changing as it goes from one screen to another. So I start on the desktop, let's say, over here on the right. And as I move into the phone, like you said, it's a single binary that I get to run on all these devices. So now the, the developer gets to think, as a design process, what's going to happen next? Does the menu go away? Do things get rearranged? What you don't want to do is take away the value of your app that makes it distinct. What you do want to do is make it so that the usability of the, of the, of the application is appropriate for the, the size and the device that it's running on. So you may, it may be smaller because it's on a phone, but it might be smaller just because it's made smaller on a desktop. So there's yeah. a lot of options that we need to think about as, yeah. as do design developers. And you can see actually on this image, uh, the, the, the one we've got here, that uh, on the desktop we've got on the right hand side, you've got a kind of a quick link launch to different pages. And that actually becomes the primary UI when we get over to the phone. So uh, the developers clearly thought about this, the designers thought about this, and uh, giving this great usability to both sets of users, but obviously access to the same important information. And so it's, it's nice to think about your design in three big tranches, right? The first one would be, and four if you include Xbox, and so the first one would maybe be phone, and then it goes into a touch experience that's like a, a, a desktop, so let's call that the tablet, and then the desktop or laptop as well. So these three big um, 
kind of tranches what you would look at and you say, okay, which one of those am I designing now? And so maybe those are broken up into uh, different XAML views, maybe. And then we can go vertically and say, okay, I'm in the phone, but what does a four inch phone look like? And I think we know we don't want to zoom in and out. We're not trying to scale it. We're trying to actually make it tailored so it looks really great on a four inch phone, just like it looks great on a five inch phone. So maybe we use, say, visual states. And so that's what we're going to talk about in this section is to talk about how we use visual states, more particularly how we use some of the new features in uh, visual states around setters and triggers. Sure. Um, you don't have to do any of this. I think that's the important takeaway. A developer can, can deliver it as is. We've done the work under the covers for you to make sure that your application runs across wherever UAP is supported, which is everywhere Windows 10 can be installed. Right? We know that's a lot. But we also know users love apps that are great on all their devices. Yep, so you put the effort, you need to focus on this and put that effort in and uh, create a really great experience for all your users. Uh, and that's, you know, that's great user experience. They're going to love your app. It's win win. Yeah. So let's look at some of the improvements around visual states, especially these, I, this idea of setters and triggers. All right, so first we have the ability to have setters. So it used to be that we would animate everything. So we would use um, object keyframes whenever we needed to go, say, from collapsed to visible. Because, but there's really no, nothing in between collapsed and visible. It just goes from collapsed to visible. Yeah, that binary switch thing. What are you it? really animating? Nothing yeah. at all. It's just yeah. a binary switch. Right, exactly. And so now we have this ability with setters to do these discrete properties. So we can just say, set the value. It, there's no need for the overhead of an animation. So that part's beautiful. So now that's, that's new for us. And now we also have this idea of triggers. And triggers are great because we get to define our view state and say, or our visual state and say, what, when should this be visible? And with no code running on our side, we allow for the underlying framework to look at our, these triggers and invoke this visual state for us. So you can see the syntax here below. Yeah, and before, in, before we had these uh, visual state triggers, you'd have to have some kind of uh, code behind, some event handler that would be looking at some size changed event or something, and then you'd have code that would be manually switching from one visual state to another. So this now allows us to put kind of that intelligence in a, in a no-code sort of way, in a mm. declarative way in AZAML, the same kind of uh, logic, just, but it makes it just neater and cleaner. Yeah. And it also made it so that we were repeating code and not being consistent, right? You yeah. might, I handle size change this way, and then the next project I'm in, I handle size change that way. So it's just good from a, a consistency point of view as well, and the ability for me to bring you in on my project team and you to understand what I'm doing because it's not all custom. Um, all right, so uh, look at setters. So the first thing that you'll, you should notice is the target. And so let me... Uh, let me just say the target is different. Usually we're used to a setter saying uh, property and then the property name and then the value and the new value. But the problem is if you do, do it that way, then um, wh whose property are you setting? So target is the new way where I can say the X name. So in this case, my panel dot orientation equals horizontal. I can switch the panel orientation that way. So it, that's a kind of a catch, right? Where you may see setter, you may be looking for property because you're thinking of styles but these are visual states. And then adaptive trigger below, you can see min width window, 600, and we'll talk about that here. So triggers, there are two types of triggers, min window width, sorry, I read that backwards, and min window height. Each of those basically saying anything above this. So if I said min window width zero, it's basically saying everything. Yeah, that's gonna always be true. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously, Typically, you're going to have a, you have, before with the slide before, we only had one visual state shown, but you're clearly going to have two or more of those. And at runtime, it's going to continually evaluate all those triggers and, and kind of select the best match. And that'll be the one that gets applied. So this is how you get this no code switching between your different visual states, like from portrait to landscape. It's all based on this. You'll typically have a min window height equals zero, which is your kind of catch all case. Right. And then you might have a min window height of Maybe. 600 or 300 or something. Yeah. And they, they will kind of activate um, according to the different, as your screen size changes, whatever your app's running on. And every app's going to be slightly different. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You may or may not support certain sizes. It's really up to you. Yeah. Um, all those values, by the way, are set in effective pixels, which means uh, don't think about scaling, don't think about resolution, don't think about DPI. Let us do that. Set everything in effective pixels so that it's a consistent experience across every device and every scale factor. And so that's, that's important. So are these pixels? No, no, no. These are effective pixels, yep, which yeah. is that abstracted pixel. It's important. Yep. Um, let me show it to you as a demo. And you, um, you tell me if I'm doing it right. 
Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to start here in Blend. I love using Blend. Of course, you know Blend's been enhanced in 2015, so it's just fantastic. All right. So I'll start with just with a blank UAP application here. And the first thing I'll do is let me go down to my XAML file. This is my main page file. And um, I just need some things to move around. So I'm going to draw a rectangle here. And so let me go to uh, the rectangle. I'll just find it. I'll draw a rectangle here. I'll keep it selected. And then I'll just copy it twice. So now paste, paste. Now I have three rectangles in my canvas. And I'll just move those around. So states, again, this is a functionality okay. that I have inside Blend. And so I can create uh, three quick states. I'll create uh, one, two, three. And remember, Blend allows me to record states, so it's really great. I'll rename them so it's Visual State Phone, uh, Visual State Tablet, and then Visual State Laptop. So this sort of matches what we were talking about before, right? Yep. And so I'll, I'll, I'll do it as desktop. All right, there we go. So um, again, it's recording all the actions. You can see that red dot. So we're in and the so, phone state, yep. Yeah, so the phone's going to be narrow. So I have these three rectangles, and I want them all to sort of sit on top of each other so you don't lose anything because of real estate. Now here's my tablet. It's, a, it's still narrow, but not quite as narrow. Let's just say, right? This is a contrived example to show off yeah. the capabilities. And then here's desktop. But look, I can change the, uh, the view here. So I'm looking at a desktop view, so it's quite a bit wider. And while I'm in desktop, um, I, I have plenty of horizontal space. So I'll move everything then to be, to be here in the horizontal space. So there, uh, there they're all set up. Let's, yeah. uh, let's uh, just preview those. So there's phone, right? Nice and narrow. Here's tablet. And there's desktop. So this, no, nothing new yet. This is all capability of Blend that's always been there. So let me go into the visual state here. And there's no tooling for this just yet. So um, I'm typing this in so you can see it. And so I'll add my state triggers. This is an adaptive trigger with a min window of 0. Remember we talked about that just a second ago. That 0 means everything bigger than this. So this is any window width will qualify for this one. So that's your catch-all state. Yeah, so it all starts with phone. And so that, that, the most narrow just makes sense. Yep. So I'll copy that and paste it down here. And so tablet, um, we'll make it 600, right? So I mean, just arbitrary, we're picking this. And then I'll paste the same thing down here in our desktop view, uh, visual state, and we'll make it, let's say, 800. So we don't have to have the code behind to do this. It'll automatically do that for us. So look, I'll just launch it right now. And uh, it'll launch in a windowed state here in Windows 10 for me. Yep. And then as I start making the adjustments, it'll automatically start changing which visual state. And so you can see it's switching yeah. to be narrow and not, and I could probably tweak that. Right. But let me show you the, the setters as well, because there's a, there are more capabilities that are worth showing off. So again, there's, um, the tooling's not here right now, but it's coming. And so just let me type it in so you can see what it's going to look like. So uh, visual state setter, and this remember, it's target. And so let me make sure I get the name right. Rectangle 1, and so rectangle one dot and then I can say the property so a rectangle doesn't have a background it has a fill and we'll make it red whenever it's in the phone visual state and so perfect I'll copy that and I'll move that down into the tablet and uh, instead of making it red just so they're all different we'll make it red green we'll do the whole RGB thing here and then when it goes to the large one it'll be blue so in the most wide where it defaults it's blue and as we go it'll be green and then a little further we can go down to red so not only is it switching because of the adaptive triggers, but I'm also using the setter. So both the adaptive trigger and the setter are also being are all being used here, and um, quite straightforward, right? There's not a lot of complexity here. Yep. Just the ability to uh, set an explicit value in a property and the ability to define when this visual state should show up, and just allow the underlying framework to switch it out for me. Pretty nice. Pretty easy. Cool. Yeah. Yep. And so these are just enhancements to the existing visual state that we've been using all along. And so triggers, uh, the best part about triggers, they're a zero code visual state switching solution. And uh, we know, because we are inside knowing people, yeah. that um, right now we can set it with width and height, but we also know there's going to be some custom solutions as well that we'll be able to use um, some reusable code that you can use in your different projects to say, now I've got a sophisticated time to switch. When should I do it? But I want to make sure that sophistication goes for every page in my application and for every application in my family of applications. So we can start building those out as well. So triggers are just going to, they have a good path coming in front of them. Right. 
All right, so what did we talk about? We talked about the strategies. So uh, inside your story, the Windows 10 adaptive story for your application, we know we have the, the strategies that we learned as web developers to build responsive design applications. We also have this ability to split up our views into separate pieces. We have that relative panel, a new control in our toolbox we can use. And now these, um, these enhancements to the visual state that we can use as well. And on and on it goes to make it as easy as possible. So this is developer's guide to the Windows 10 preview. Lots of things are going to be changing. Tooling will be changing a little bit. But this is where we're headed. And this is what you can play with today. So go get Visual Studio 2015 preview. Try it for yourself. See how easy it is. Then come back and watch another module with us. Welcome to the Developer's Guide for Windows 10 Preview. I'm Jerry Nixon, Developer Evangelist here in the United States. This is my compatriot. <laughs> and I'm Andy Wigley. I'm Developer Evangelist out of the UK. We're talking about all the new candy that you have in your Visual Studio 2015 Preview and Windows 10 Preview SDK. And right now we're going to be talking about the new ways that apps can communicate with each other. Andy, what are we going to cover? Okay, so we're going to look at, first of all, what we had in 8.1, because it sort of kind of sets the context. 